Coming up on this edition of Out of the Blue, MTSU's International Holocaust Studies Conference brings renowned scholars and speakers to Middle Tennessee to bring attention to genocide, the systematic killing of those perceived to be the other, in hopes that future generations listen and learn. Here, acclaimed scholars take on the German mentality that led to the Holocaust. We'll also take a look at job prospects by taking you to MTSU's career fair. In this month's cover story, Living in the Shadows, Hidden Children of the Holocaust. Hear from two survivors who lived through the Holocaust by hiding with families who defied the Nazi regime. Plus, the Blue Raiders kick off the 2013 basketball season with high expectations in Conference USA. That and more coming up in this edition of Out of the Blue. Hello and welcome to another edition of Out of the Blue. I'm Mike Browning. We're coming to you this month from Jeff Hendricks Stadium Club at Floyd Stadium. This club and Floyd Stadium erupted in Blue Raider excitement on the evening of October 24th when the Blue Raiders managed to eke out a 51-49 victory over Marshall with just seconds remaining in the game. Second and goal, three seconds to go. Probably the last play of the game. Kilgore back to throw over the middle. Oh, touchdown! Wow. To Morris Jefferson, touchdown, one second to go. The nine-yard touchdown pass from Kilgore to Jefferson as time expired enabled MTSU to come away with the win and even the Blue Raider record to four and four, closing out the month of October. Later in the show, Coach Rick Stockstill talks about the rest of the 2013 season. For almost a quarter century, MTSU has been the site of the Biennial International Holocaust Studies Conference allowing attendees to learn from compelling first-person accounts from survivors, liberators, and scholars, as well as music and film. In mid-October, the 11th gathering of the scholars included internationally acclaimed scholar Dr. Gerhard Weinberg, professor emeritus at the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill. As a community service, Dr. Weinberg delivered a special lecture at Adams Place, Roosevelt, Truman, and the Holocaust. In the Second World War, as American and British and Russian troops move into Germany in 44-45, the German people, happily or unhappily, realize we're losing. Hmm? World War I was different. All the fighting, or 99% of the fighting of World War I took place outside Germany when they cave in and get an armistice in November of 1918. German troops are still in occupation of the majority of Belgium and substantial portions of France and very large parts of Southeast and Eastern Europe. Defeat, in other words, comes not with resignation as something that's obviously coming, but it was a startling surprise to people who thought they were winning. First they beat the Serbs, then they beat the Romanians, and they beat the Russians. Then they thought they were winning in the West, and then one fine day they told, sorry folks, we just lost the war. Huh? <laughs> that under those circumstances it becomes possible to peddle the most insane notions, namely, we weren't really defeated at all. Hmm? And if we handle things a little differently, we're guaranteed to win the next time. It is unfortunately possible to persuade people, ordinary educated people, of the most preposterous things if they're prepared to believe them. Later in our cover story, you'll hear from survivors of the Holocaust who spoke with students and teachers about their experiences in a special program, Life in the Shadows, Hidden Children and the Holocaust. Well, Tennessee Supreme Court Justice Gary Wade and the other justices of the court brought their proceedings to the MTSU campus in October 
The justices heard arguments in three mid-state cases as part of the Supreme Court Advancing Legal Education for Students program, known by the acronym SCALES. MTSU students were then able to meet with attorneys for hour-long debriefings of the cases. MTSU's American Democracy Project sponsored the special session of the Tennessee Supreme Court, a first on campus. All of us on the Supreme Court have either been practicing law or have been in the judicial system for 35, at least 35 years. Some of us are over 40. Today we have a better judiciary, finer judges than in any time during my professional career. During the debriefings with attorneys, MTSU students witnessed continued verbal sparring matches between the lawyers that quickly evolved into pointed inquiries about the judicial process. MTSU's Recording Industry Chair Speaker Series brought some big-name talent to campus to share their experiences with students. Among them, Grammy-nominated R&B singer and songwriter Kenny Lattimore. Eventually, Kenny was like, here, um this is the melody and we started working on this song and I began to be known for these lyrics that really came out of my friendship and my relationship with this, this great songwriter. So it was funny because when he did the melody I said, okay, it sounds a little bit like Babyface. You know, da 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 da. But I began to put me into the song and, uh, and it came out like, for you, I'd give a lifetime of stability. Anything you want of me. Nothing is impossible for you. There are no words or ways to show my love or all the thoughts I'm thinking of. Cause this life is no good alone since we've become one I've made a change and everything I do now makes sense and all roads end all I do is for you In MTSU's new drive to improve student success, President Sidney McPhee has appointed two administrators to interim roles to oversee initiatives under what's being called the MTSU Quest for Success. University College Dean Mike Boyle will serve as interim vice provost for student success. Vincent Windrow will serve as interim assistant vice provost for student success. They will work with Provost Brad Bartell and Dr. McPhee to evaluate every division, office, department, school, and college for measurable support for retention and graduation. It comes as MTSU seeks to understand the reasons some students drop out and fail to achieve, while others are successful at earning their degrees. The Fall Career Fair is MTSU's largest on-campus fair of the year, with more than 100 employers and over 1,000 students participating. Entry-level wages have fallen over the last few years for college graduates as the Great Recession has meant higher unemployment and tougher job prospects. Finding a job may be tough in today's economy, but you'll find these MTSU students optimistic about their futures. Producer Miranda McGill talked to some about their view of the job market. This is our fall career fair. We have uh, about 114 employers and also graduate and professional programs here recruiting and uh, we anticipate about a thousand students uh, to be here as well. We do hear some really good outcomes from students who, uh, that we work with on a regular basis. And basically all you need is people start talking to people. If you can do that, you can work hard. We're definitely looking to expand. Um, we find the right candidates who are ready to get out of school. We, we, need, we need employees now and we need people that are ready to work and want to do well in their career. It's been a great opportunity for me. I'm actually an alumni from MTSU, and I've managed to uh, make it a good career because I, I really do believe in this company, and I think it's it's a great way for a young person out of college to make have a good career, get good benefits, and just make a you know good career for yourself. I, mean, I want to find something I'm passionate about. Well, I went to the Air Force, so that got me a little 
experience in the air, you know, aerospace field, but it's not really what I'm interested in anymore. So state employers basically is what I'm looking for, more government oriented job. I know it's not the best time, but you know. I'm hoping to just learn some new things, maybe get a little bit more direction about exactly what I want to do and just see what opportunities are out there. I'm looking for more of a marketing and a lot of people are looking for IT people, but you know, it's good because they're still able to tell me a lot of different positions that they do have at the company, so it's still helpful. They're great events for networking. We encourage students, of course, and, and alumni who participate in the event to come at a minimum for the networking opportunity. If you could pick a job, what would you be doing most of the time? They're, they're high value events for both our students and employers. We are looking today for quality applicants uh, to fill some entry level positions that we have in sales, um, in our inventory, in our client services department, and in our marketing department. We do participate in a lot of career fairs for MTSU, and it's a great opportunity, so students need to take them seriously. MTSU President Dr. Sidney A. McPhee isn't slowing down on his efforts to deepen collaboration with China, including the Confucius Institute, first established on the MTSU campus in 2010. Recently, the CEO who oversees the 400-plus Confucius Institutes worldwide, Xu Lin, accepted an invitation from President McPhee to tour both the state capitol and the MTSU campus. Among the benefits of fostering this relationship will be a growing number of Chinese students studying at Middle Tennessee State University. Madame Xu Lin is the Director General of the Confucius Institute, also uh, the Chinese Language Council International. Uh, in China. Uh, she's also a member of the China State Council. Uh, her position is very significant in the sense of education and uh, Chinese language teaching across the world. The, the mission of the uh, Institute is to promote the learning of Chinese language and the understanding of Chinese culture across the globe. And the first uh, Confucius Institute was established in 2004. And there are about 400 uh, institutes across the world, uh, among which uh, 90 plus of them are located in the United States. Well, the ultimate mission is to promote peace and harmony uh, in the world uh, through the teaching uh, and the understanding of Chinese language. I pray for blue. You pray for blue. Oh, no. <laughs> and before we do it, it has. I am true blue, okay, good. Middle Tennessee State. Chinese likes to give gifts to show uh, appreciation uh, of uh, friendship. Uh, so when, when they visit you, they give you uh, gifts uh, from local uh, collections, art, uh, artifacts, and other things significant to them. And uh, they're very humble to receive gifts from, from friends also. I'm very, very optimistic about the relationship between these two countries because we share so many common interests and uh, we, we deal with so many uh, same issues and, and uh, the world depends on the good relationship between these two countries. That's a, a broader sense. But for MTSU, uh, through the work of the International Affairs and the Confucius Institute, we have been building very, very good relationship with the Chinese institutions. We build very strategic uh, partnerships with the universities in China and other countries also. And I, I see a uh, dramatic increase in Chinese student population on our, our campus. Xu also serves as Director General of the Office of Chinese Language Council International which oversees a worldwide network of institutes that offers Chinese language and other services in affiliation with China's Ministry of Education. My parents decided that our best chance of survival was for the three of us to split up and hide separately. I am True Blue. As a member of this diverse community, I'm a valuable contributor to its progress and success. I'm engaged in the life of this community. I'm a recipient and a giver. I am a listener and a speaker. I am honest in word and deed. I'm committed to reason, not violence. I am a learner. Now and forever. I am a Blue Raider. I am a Blue Raider. I'm a Blue Raider. True Blue.
Being True Blue is working to enhance our community. My name is Kobe Sherlock and I am True Blue. At Middle Tennessee State University, we are devoted to student success. We offer the advantages of a major comprehensive university with the care and attention found at a small college. We are a community that believes in learning, growth, and service. We hold these values dear, and there's a simple phrase that conveys them. I am true blue. I am true blue. I am true blue. Being True Blue is embracing unique perspectives. My name is Iris Montes and I am True Blue. At Middle Tennessee State University, students don't just earn a degree in an electronic media communications field, they get to learn, collaborate, and create. Middle Tennessee students get hands-on, real-world experience, and our graduates have found exciting jobs with some of the world's communication leaders. This is just one community among many. Explore all that MTSU has to offer. Devoted to student success, Middle Tennessee State University. Every other year, MTSU's International Holocaust Studies Conference brings survivors of the Holocaust to Middle Tennessee to tell their stories. 2013 was no different, as this year's Irvin and Elizabeth Lamore Holocaust Education Conference featured hidden children, Dr. Nellie Toll and John Koenigsberg. They lived life in the shadows. Starting off with hate, racism, all of this escalates to the next level, and to be a silent bystander is another reason that you must never succumb to. My father decided to hide me and my mother, and after an attempt to escape to a village, my father found a kind Christian person who used to live in our apartment building free of charge, before the war, and he spoke to Mr. W and asked him if he would be willing to take my mother and me until the war is over. This was the room on the street floor, and uh, we decided that this was going to be a safe place, and it was in this place where I started to paint. First of all, I must tell you that my mother was there always for me. And my mother decided to make Mrs. W ask her friend to get me a little watercolor box. You know those little boxes that you can get, like 10 colors. And once I got that box, I embarked on another world of fantasy. Because of my mother, who was always there, who was a fantastic person, assuring me we will be fine we are going to be good, and I want you to be happy, and you will grow up, and you will be a teenager, and have lots and lots of boyfriends. This was my big portrait. You couldn't have cheeks any redder than I did, but then this was the healthy look, perhaps. I don't know. This is a girl with kittens with her little brother. And when the Germans came, they pulled everybody all I had three children, my aunt's three children, and my little brother from under the bed. Once he got on a truck, we never did see him again. We will, the doors were always closed when Mrs. W kept us. She would pretend to look for the key, and then she would open the door, and we went into our hiding place in that room. I kept looking for my father in the depths of the window, in the depths behind the window, hoping he would come. He said he had to go back to the ghetto to take care of his mother, father, and sister. Once they are taken care of in a safe place, he will come to visit us and stay with us. Whether it's from bullying, pushing around, racism, or hating each other, 
we must always remember that that can lead to something much more horrible like the Holocaust. Thank you. As you can see, my name is John Koenigsberg, and I'm a child survivor of the Holocaust. My mom is the lady right over here, and these are my grandparents. She actually had two additional brothers. This is what I was left with. My mom, and luckily my dad obviously survived as well. This was just her family. And my aunt Frida, who also survived. My aunt Frida lost her husband while, while they were both interned in Auschwitz. These are my mom's papers. Here are my papers, and I was had to register the 4th of August, 1942. A very, very, very clear memory I have from that very early age was the memory of my grandfather, my mom's dad, who came to live with us in 1939 after my grandmother passed away. In early 1943, when I was five and a half years old, a little bit more, my whole world turned upside down. I vividly remember that horrible knock on the door and my mom, petrified and very scared, hurriedly took me and hit me in the back bedroom. The Gestapo was at our door and they took my beloved grandfather away. My parents decided that our best chance of survival was for the three of us to split up and hide separately. They took me directly from the hospital to this family, gave them a sum of money for my care with promises of more, however long that might take, and removed me and transported me about 150 kilometers from Amsterdam to the most southern portion of Holland. Here I am, Limburg. Mom and Papa Snijkers had one bedroom, the three sisters had another bedroom. Jan and I shared the same bed. As far as the neighbors were concerned, I was a sickly five and a half year old cousin by the name of Shani Snakers, and this is where my name changed to John, from Joseph to John. And this was picture of liberation, September 1944. Here I am, here are the three sisters, Jan Snakers, Mom and Papa Snakers, and the dog Shirley. I decided to nominate the Snakers family to Yad Vashem, Jerusalem, to honor them with the Righteous Among the Nations Award. It's the highest honor awarded by the State of Israel to non Jews who acted according to the noblest principles of humanity by risking their lives to help Jews during the Holocaust. The reason I speak about my experiences and the reason we have these pro programs is because I believe that the lessons of the Holocaust must not be diminished into just a footnote in history. I speak so my voice will be heard by the generations who come after me, and I speak so my voice and the next generations will never forget. Thank you for listening to my story. The Tennessee Holocaust Commission designed the program specifically for middle and high school students and teachers to learn about the Holocaust. We'll be right back. It was a, it was a good day, a good night. I mean, a lot of fans came out. The, our players enjoyed it. The men's players enjoyed it. You know, that's what it's all about. It's about them anyway. We started in 1911 with a clear mission to train Tennessee's best teachers. For the last 100 years, Middle Tennessee State University has carried out that mission and so much more. Nationally recognized as an affordable quality university, the number one choice of undergraduates in Tennessee. As we celebrate our centennial, we look with pride at the past. We look forward to the future. Check out why we're Tennessee's best. Being true blue is making the world a safer place. My name is Sam Willie and I am True Blue.
Middle Tennessee State University, music majors receive a world-class education from a renowned faculty. Students experience first-chair instruction no matter their instrument. Our graduates go on to share their gifts on stages worldwide and instruct the next generation of musicians, never forgetting that they found their forte at Middle Tennessee. This is just one community among many. Explore all that MTSU has to offer. Devoted to student success, Middle Tennessee State University. Being True Blue is helping others to reach their potential. My name is Daryl Freeman, and I am True Blue. Science shapes our society. The products, technologies, and efforts of the sciences affect much of our everyday lives. And the more advances we make, the more the careers of tomorrow will rely on a strong education in the basic and applied sciences. At MTSU, you will learn from Tennessee's best faculty, along with hands-on training with the latest equipment and facilities. Come and learn the science of success. It's not often we get to see the face behind a cartoon strip, but meet Guy Gilchrist, the artistic talent and syndicated cartoonist behind the Nancy comic strip. And here's Nancy promoting True Blue Friday just before homecoming. Nancy was originally penned by the late Ernie Bushmiller, but was inherited 16 years ago by Gilchrist. The comic strip is seen by 57 million readers and carried in more than 400 newspapers in 80 countries. The Blue Raiders followed up the homecoming loss with a road defeat to North Texas, then took on Marshall at home in the popular blackout game. As we showed you at the top of the show, MTSU defeated Marshall on the final play of the game with a last-second touchdown pass, keeping Blue Raider season hopes alive. You know, we're also trying to get bowl eligible, and that's a, that's a big deal, too. So uh, you got four games left to, to, to try to get bowl eligible and us getting a bowl, but... Uh, Again, all that stuff's on the peripheral. It doesn't mean a hill of beans, and uh, you can't control that. We've got to take care of UAB, and that's, that's our, that'll be our mindset. The Lady Raiders have been picked as the preseason favorite in the Conference USA women's basketball poll. The Raiders earned eight first-place votes from league coaches ahead of UTEP with six votes. Tulane, Charlotte, and FIU rounded out the top five. This will be the inaugural season for the Lady Raiders in Conference USA. The Raiders finished 25-8 and eight last season and have made the NCAA tournament nine out of the last ten seasons. MTSU's first ever basketball fan day on October 17th was a big success with hundreds of fans turning out to see both the men's and women's basketball teams up close and personal. Here you see the Lady Raiders signing autographs with fans at Murphy Center where both head coaches touted the fan day as a first of many to come. It was, a, it was a good day, a good night. I mean, a lot of fans came out. The, our players enjoyed it. The men's players enjoyed it. You know, that's what it's all about. It's about them anyway. Yeah, I hope that Rick and I, can we get an early start on it next year and have both programs really get behind it and, and really make it a, a deal and really get it out to the community. I think you'll see this thing grow really, really heavily next year. That's it for this edition of Out of the Blue. For more information on MTSU News, be sure to go to mtsunews.com. Until next time, stay true blue.